Hello, and thank you for joining me. My name is Joe Darlene from Home Scout, a first closed company. And today we got an awesome presentation today uh, that I'm so happy you're here to join us. We'll take some questions at the end, but I'll keep this moving pretty fast. But really, our topic today is all about how the latest GSE approvals on mortgage verification, I think, is going to change mortgage capacity forever. And today we have an awesome guest. Uh, but before we get started, um, as you settle into your seats, and as you get ready for this great presentation we're about to give you, um, I just want to give a shout out for the California MBA's uh, Innovation Committee's uh, really hugest fan and our biggest sponsor, Incelerate. Incelerate helps lenders close more loans through better borrower engagement. The mortgage industry's most innovative, really customer experience platform, it's called a CEP, which delivers lead management, sales enablement, uh, sales enablement, uh, engagement. It's It's got this ro robust mortgage specific content library and, and they use data intelligence all in one comprehensive, highly scalable platform. And Celerace delivers this dynamic technology and it's a strategy and a content for every channel of their business, of your business, and can ensure engagement throughout the customer journey, whether it be from your borrower's journey, your referral partner's journey, or any other party to that loan transaction. So this dynamic enterprise solution seamlessly fits into your tech stack. It's got phone integration. It connects your POS, your LOS, your servicing system, and connect to your data enrichment system. And due to their advanced API connectivity, their modern design and open architecture, that's how it gets done. Gone are the days of managing multiple separate systems like CRMs and uh, marketing automations and lead management and more. And having your data all trapped in those individual silos, no comprende, doesn't work. This innovation platform allows you to provide an internal, external customers, timely, relevant information based on data intelligence to build repeatable customers at the stage in the customer's journey life cycle. It allows you to close more loans, improve borrower conversions, enhance borrower and consumer retention. And it can transform your customer acquisition life cycle. Think about that, transforming your life cycle and create customers for life. For more information, visit Incelerate, Incelerate.com, 855-973-1646. Big shout out to Josh. Thank you very much for allowing us to have this presentation. Okay, let me open this presentation here today and introduce our guest, which I'm very excited to have. Um, so again, how the latest GSE approvals on mortgage verification is gonna change mortgage capacity forever. Okay, here's my opening. You know, living through the latest all time record refinance volume, our mortgage industry has shown that with technology, we proved we could do most of this volume working from home. Big shout out to everyone again for our industry for pulling this off in the middle of a worldwide health crisis. But even in the amount of technical advances we have, we still took longer, actually seven to 10 days longer to fund loans. And turn times on approvals skyrocketed, even past the available 60 day rate lock. Consumer frustration in the process with additional drip, drip, drip of conditions all the way up into closing, plus a very manual and clunky mobile notary and, a, and or a con disjointed closing process has a negative effect on customer satisfaction scores. Sound familiar, folks? While we've been pulling back from our record pays, volume is still brisk and, you know, uh, the stress on the purchase money, uh, you know, lending side of this business leaves no room for error. <laughs> you can't have any unexpected delays. You'll never get another loan from that realtor again if you have any of those type of delays. That is, even if your clients are lucky enough to even get an offer accepted nowadays, right? We all got tons of pre-approved purchase money borrowers. We don't have enough properties to get them into. But is that trend finally coming to an end with the latest news from Fannie and Freddie on the verification of income and employment? The acceptance for day one certainty and for Freddie Mac AIM to receive rep and warrant on those who deliver files directly to, to the agencies? Could this change the game forever? I mean, what would it be like if you never had any kind of conditions for credit, income, employment, or assets ever again? What will we be focused on then? Trying to get the damn appraiser to show up on time? I don't know. Um, listen, I've been a huge fan of this permission authorization type thing at the point of sale. I've been on board with it since day one. I'm a huge fan of this. And as an originator, I tried to get my borrower to go down this route as fast as I could, as many times as I could, uh, because I didn't care what the customer journey was. I just wanted to 
really, I really thought that giving the consumer more control of the loan process to eliminate conditions at the point of sale is how lenders reduce risk, they lower cost, and they achieve greater purchase certainty. So today we have with us at the Innovation Committee, one of the top subject matter experts in our industry today. And I'd like to introduce to the California MBA, Lisa Kimball, the SVP of Product and Strategic Programs at Finicity, a MasterCard company. Lisa Kimball's a 20 year veteran of the financial services industry, and she's a strong advocate for the consumer. And it's her direction that has led to advances in innovation that help consumers through all of their financial decisions for mortgage, consumer, payments, e budgeting, even investing. So Lisa's here today to discuss with us how innovation in the verification side of the space is changing the way business is getting approved and funded. And more importantly, what is the latest news on the verification of employment and income and employment? So welcome, Lisa. Please take a few minutes to introduce yourself to the audience and give a little bit of your background before I get into the questions, please. Oh, fantastic. Thanks so much, Joe. I'm super excited to be here today and to be able to talk about innovation in mortgage and how Freddie and Fannie are working to enable new experiences. I've been in financial services for over 20 years and had a variety of roles in operation, system design and implementation, technology strategy. And so I'm very familiar with this balancing act of optimizing consumer experiences without letting go of the reins on fraud and credit risk management. And I'm really interested in changing the way that we've thought about those as trade-offs. Um, like either it's easy for a customer or it mitigates risk. And I think we should begin thinking about the ability to improve both. And that's exactly where we are in this moment. So um, really, um, I, I just never thought I would say this, having a career in financial services, these are super exciting times. <laughs> they really are. Um, and uh, the technology advancement um, is, is just coming so quickly. It's been really fun. So uh, for me, it's been great for to partner over the last few years with the GSEs and bring these solutions to market, which um, not only meet their strict criteria for risk management, um, you know, at a national scale, but also streamlines consumer and lender flows and, and removes friction. So I'm super excited to be here today and talk a little bit more about that. Well, thank you for joining us, Lisa. Thank you for taking time out of your day to share your knowledge with us here at the Innovation Committee. Um, I, it was, I believe, and I concur with you that this is probably one of the most exciting times, I think, in my most recent history um, with this new approval and why I think it's gonna change mortgage capacity forever. So, so can you please give our California MBA lenders and originators just the latest GSE approval, uh, what it really means and uh, what it really means for the mortgage verification service? Yeah, absolutely. So Fannie and Freddie's approval of Finicity's digital solutions really means that with a single borrower flow, which by the way, takes under five minutes to complete, asset income and employment verification can be completed in what is nearly real time um, via submission through automated underwriting tools. Um, it's really like one of the greatest things that's happened um, here in the last six months was um, th the ability to have uh, one of our clients share with us that they had a borrower permission, um, permission their data access, they submitted to automated underwriting and seconds later received a message, no further documentation is required. This is good for 90 days. Um, it was just really stunning um, and a really fun day for all of us. So um, that, that's really um, what this GSE approval of the verification of income and employment means for lenders. Yeah, it's exciting for originators too as well when they receive that. Um, it's uh, it's elation, and I think once yeah. you get that stimulation, you never want to go back. Um, <laughs> because it's it's oh, you got to give me the paychecks now, please don't do that. Um, uh, anyway, so that's great. Yeah, exactly. That's great. Okay, okay. So in your opinion, then the latest uh, approval going is going to be a game changer. How is it going to be a game changer for direct sellers? Um, well, I would say, first of all, it, it really gives um, direct sellers and, and everybody um, an alternative and a competitor to the work number, which, you know, we've heard in the market a lot has been a real challenge. Um, and uh, so just getting a little bit of competitive um, um, spirit in the market, I think, is helpful. 
Um, also, the opportunity to get that immediate notification of rep and warrant um, status on assets, income, and employment. Uh, you know, again, like just immediately, hey, this loan's good, no further documentation required as long as you close within a certain time period. Right. Um, and then I think there will also, you know, just beyond um, direct sellers, I think there's um, uh, going to be increased demand by other investors also who will have an interest to purchase loans that they um, that they can assign uh, a higher risk management um, to, right? Less risk yeah. and, and a better digital verification. Yeah, the wholesale, the TPO side, uh, the non-QM business, um, and all your all your products you're doing on that side. That's a, that's a topic for a different different webinar. <laughs> a different day, yeah. <laughs> uh, don't, get, don't get me off track, Lisa. Um, okay, uh, c customers deserve to be at the center of the lending experience. How are they becoming increasingly unlikely to settle for anything else? You know, uh, that's what they want. They want to control the whole process. So how best should lenders meet the needs of consumers and leverage technology with this type of new process with the VOIE? Yeah. Um, you know, I love that. I mean, you highlighted um, in my intro, I am really passionate about consumers yeah. ability to control um, and, and leverage their data for their own purposes. Um, and I think increasingly that we expect to see consumers choosing their lender relationships based on an experience that they're looking for. They um, they really want that to be an easier experience. They they are expecting it to be digital, especially after what we've been through the last you know 12 to 18 months. Um, and uh, you know um, borrowers are no longer. Um, uh, willing to come through a process where, you know, once a week they get another call for another document. Oh, one more pay stub. Oh, you know, can you pull another bank statement? Those kind of things. Right. Um, so I actually think we're going to see a real shift where consumers are choosing their lender based on some of that, um, uh, on some of that experience. Yeah, that's great. Great. Now, give me, a, I want to add on a little question here. I, I was really curious. What are you mostly seeing now? Is it mostly people using it on the mobile device or do you see most of it being done really on the desktop inside of their POS experiences typically? Yeah, you know, I, um, this one surprised me so much when I um, when I started working in this space, um, uh, but it's just grown over time as well. So um, Finicity on the whole, more than 70% of our traffic comes through a mobile device. Um, which, you know, just I, I initially thought, you know, no one's actually going to do this kind of transaction. Um, on their mobile, but we do everything on our on our mobile devices. Um, it varies really widely from lender to lender, and we think that has a lot to do with um, with demographics um, that different lenders specialize in, but also the channel um, and you know and the way that that user uh, is coming into the experience. But still, we see you know um, something approaching half of mortgage volume <laughs> coming through on mobile, which just restates to me. The desire that consumers have, right? They're they're managing and juggling their lives um, wherever and whenever. So if I'm, you know, if it's soccer halftime on Saturday morning and I want to finish doing my um, my loan application, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> um, yeah. Or if I'm in if I'm in line at the grocery store, whatever. So um, it, yeah, it's been really interesting. Or that one home that you've been watching. Uh, it just got listed. You just got the notification that if that home ever came in the market, you told your mortgage guy, you better get that letter ready right now, right? Exactly. And sure enough, you're at the ball game and it just happened mm -hmm. on your phone. That home just got listed. You want to make an offer right now, right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. The comfort of the ball game. That's, yep. That's, yeah, I'm with you. Okay. So Lisa, it seems like a winning digital adoption strategy really puts the consumer at the heart of this experience because it is permission authorized. What must this experience help the consumer with? Yeah, I, um, I love this question. I think there's a number a number of places and it kind of runs the gamut. So I think first um, it needs to help them evaluate their options. So, you know, what what's embedded in terms of education and um, maybe some what if what if scenarios or, you know, the ability to just really um, also get their questions answered. Um, or have that contact that's that's close, like you know, how is how is their loan officer really plugged in um, as well with the um, with the experience that they're coming through? Um, I think it also needs to ensure that they can complete the transaction with as little friction as possible. 
So, um, you know, if we come back to the ball game example, um, you know, you're gonna, you get my attention for a couple of minutes um, and I need to be able to get done the stuff that I, that I want to get done there. Um, and uh, it needs to be clean and clear. Um, so low friction, but also with a good amount of understanding, like we want, we want to make sure consumers know exactly what it is that they're permissioning and exactly what they're doing throughout the process. Sure. Um, I think then, you know, kind of carrying through, they also need to be able to understand status. Um, so was this accepted? What, you know, um, am I going to need to do some additional steps? What's going on? Right. Did it, was, was the transaction successful and and yeah. you know, what are my next steps I need to follow? Right, right. Yeah. Um, and then the most important, um, you know, I mentioned it last, but um, but nothing happens without this one being being part of the overall consumer experience. And that is that they need to feel secure and in control of what they're sharing and for what purpose. So, yeah. um, you know, basically the rest of it's a non-starter um if there's a lack of confidence in the security of um of the data and what's being done with it yeah i think you had said uh when we had met before lisa you feel more connected you feel more in control and the benefit of using this data with digital tools really is enlightening for that consumer absolutely yeah i mean um as a consumer also you know in in the traditional mortgage process i send a lot of information out and I wait a little while. <laughs> I don't know, um, you know, I don't know where that may run into problems or whatever. So also having that really fast messaging back to the consumer, okay, income's good and it, you know, um, or or we need X or Y, but having it be really quick and very transparent, I think is absolutely what, um, what consumers are looking for. And, and your reports are so just really clear for the underwriters and processors too as well. I mean, um, just amazing. Okay, Lisa, you know I'm a huge fan of your CEO, Steve Smith, right? And, <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, and I wanted to get some comments in there from one of his latest quotes about what he said, and, and I want to read you this quote. He said, leaders in lending space need to understand that the greatest hurdle for technology in the housing industry is not technical, it's cultural. Could you please uh, expound on uh, <laughs> this quote? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, I also am a huge fan of Steve Smith, by the way, and oh. um, and this particular quote um, was it, it just is really eye opening. Um, I'd love to be able to sort of see people's reactions um, and whether that really resonates. Um, this is truly aligned with what we see and hear in the market. So it's it's um, much easier to implement technology than it is to get um, loan officers, let's say, who have tr who have a tried and true process that has been working well for them for decades to adjust sure. the way that they work with their clients. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they've um, as I as I interact with um, loan officers, what they tell me is that um, you know regularly some new shiny thing comes up. And um, you know they might give it a shot, but if it's not easy and um, and if it doesn't work well for their borrowers, um, they walk right off it and go back to to their original process, right? They they know that works. They know how to work that process and that flow. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I think I think the other thing I'd add there, like it's just as difficult to really shift um, methods of thinking about risk management. <laughs> So, um, you know, for example, lenders will tell us sometimes they have concerns about the security of the technology and the safety of their borrower's information. Great questions, great points. But if you can, if you just stop and think about what happens sometimes today with pay stubs and W-2s that get sent to a lender, we've got a borrower who's pulling them down from a site, printing them off. Yeah. Um, they send them over, maybe by secure email, maybe not, right? They're, they get viewed by multiple people. Um, there's just a wide variety of places where that kind of documentation can be compromised. Oh, yeah. um, and so the technology and the implementation of it has absolutely improved that security on all fronts. But it's, but it's all of us humans <laughs> who stop and say, oh, that's kind of hard for me to get my head around. Um, you know, uh, is is this really going to be better? Yeah, and so, I think I, I think you're, just a top on that. I mean, you know, this adopting this is 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 not an event, right? It's a process of change management that you were talking yes. about. 
And you need to adopt the ROI culture of understanding that, hey, listen, you need to incorporate this culture. I did this for the California MBA. I wrote up uh, uh, these, these three trends that were happening. And one of them was exactly about this topic. You need to be as an originator today versed about what this is and what it is not, right? And to help your client through it. If you can do that, help your client to adjust to that, they'll remember you more and you'll have another shot at, you know, being their customer for life. Okay, let me go yeah. on. I, there's so much I want to cover. I know we could talk about this for I, probably hours, but I want to, <laughs> I, I'm very conscious of your time. So what would digital verification improve in the loan process? Tell me what specifically do you think in the loan process it improves, I would say the most. I mean, I think it does a lot, but you know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. There, well, I'll try to I'll try to summarize it, but um, you know, there's there's really three key areas that I think about. So, of course, I'm going to start with the consumer. Um, again, borrower just is able to do everything they need for asset income and employment validation in less than five minutes, and mm -hmm. they do it from anywhere. Um, it's super easy, and they're not spending the afternoon like going through filing cabinets, gathering documentation, whatever um, whatever that looks like. So advantage for the borrower, really smooth, easy process, and they're done. Um, mm -hmm. Lenders get this peace of mind in qualifying and closing the loan. So you get that immediate feedback. You're certain now that you don't need follow-up docs. You don't need additional detail. There's not going to be something else that's going to crop up during underwriting that, um, you know, that's going to throw a wrench into the process or require you to reach back out to that borrower and, um, you know, look for something uh, additional from them. Right. And then um, also the speed at which the digital verifications um, are returned have a downstream impact on speed to close. So um, based on a, an assessment that Fannie Mae did, um, using digital verification for asset income and employment ha can reduce closing time by an average of 12 days. Um, wow. And somebody, somebody shared with me um, a statement a couple of years ago that I just um, thought was so true, but also a little bit comical. Like we get this um, deal put together and then, um, you know, every day between that day and closing, we're just sitting there waiting for something to break or fall apart in this deal, right? Like close it faster, um, get everybody moving on. So yeah, yeah, no, that's great. That 12 days uh, is, is amazing, right? It's huge, uh, yeah. It saves up to eight days for asset validation and 12 days for employment and income validations, which you what I put down in my notes when we talked yeah. to you last. That, those are just amazing stats. I mean, it, that's what yeah. we're saying. That's what this webinar is about. It's about this, this, this team member mindset about digital adoption may be the start. It may start at the executive level, but really the execution happens here in the loan process. And this is why we believe mortgage capacity has changed now. It's changed. You can save eight to 10 days just by doing one stroke that your customer will do and wants to do in the process. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't get me started. Okay. Um, okay. Next question. How does rep and warrant relief with the mortgage verification service benefit lenders? Yeah. I mean, I think that one's just back to the peace of mind that I mentioned, um, that I mentioned a minute ago. Um, the lenders get the assurance from Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae or both. Um, that they're ready to purchase that loan uh, without risk of buyback. So, um, you know, I think that's um, that uh, streamlines process for lenders um, when they, uh, you know, you can you can also uh, reduce some of your underwriting effort once you've got that that confirmation from um, from Freddie Mac or Fannie Mae. Um, and then also you have the assurance that you're not going to need to go back during a further underwriting process and continue to ask for additional documentation um, or get to close or close to close and find out that you don't have what you need. Right, right. Um, okay, that's great, that's great. So, I, and then here, here's my next question then. How can originators ensure that the borrowers are prepared for the digital verification process? I mean, how can we preempt borrowers' concerns or overcome borrow objection? I know you're passionate about this, so yep. please take it um, away. I've, so honestly, um, the borrower's ready. Um, I, <laughs> they and we know how to the process. The yeah. ready. You, got some um, you got some stats for us on that? Um, well, you know, just, I don't know if I've got a uh, right sitting in front of me, um, but, but, uh, that's consistently what we're hearing and seeing as, as we have implementation and back to that change management, it's the, it's the loan officers, um, who are, who are wanting to sort of protect their borrowers and protect the process, um, that I think we really need to pay attention to, um, right now in terms of like 
how do we get loan officer objections, concerns, and questions um, handled so that they have a high level of confidence here as well. Um, yeah. the, the borrowers, again, like especially this just accelerated the last 18 months while, um, you know, while people were not going face to face for virtually anything. Yeah. Um, and people are absolutely comfortable with this being a process um, that they can do mobile and, um, uh, you know, again, whenever they want, however they want. Yeah. You know, I think explain to the borrower, you know, that for a digital verification, it uses, like you said, bank level security, right? Found in all the top tier banks in the world, right? And then telling the consumer by using their online bank account, they can provide the necessary financial information within minutes with just a few clicks. So they don't have to print and download and send to you, right? And, uh, you know, I think explaining to the borrower that digital verifications are really more secure, like you brought up before, is really the way to preempt this from going off the rails of not being too sure about what you're gonna do. Because once you see, like you said, once you see that instant approval from Fannie or Freddie with no conditions for verification of income and yeah. employment assets, it will change the way that you're doing business. You will say, oh my gosh, I gotta learn this, right? And so really, <laughs> if mortgage capacity is changing, then you're right, these originators need to change with us and, and, and really help us because, you know, it was funny, I was doing a lot of day one certainty loans uh, early on in my career and um, when they first came out. Um, uh, and I asked the secondary mortgage guy at the time, hey, you really liking how they're doing these great selling on the back end, selling, we were selling directly to Fannie at the time. And um, he said, yeah, we love it. This is so easy, Joe. It's great, great, great ideas. Thanks for bringing it to us. Um, I said, well, you want to do a lot more? And he says, well, yeah, how do I do a lot more? And I said, well, lower the rate. If you go a quarter off the rate, if you, you have to use, you know, the automation side of the thing. And he goes, Joe, we would never give a quarter off the rate. What are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> so will we get there someday i don't know but uh but so i got a question for you um you know i've known a lot about finicity in your background and and i've been to follow your company for a while and everything else um and i know a lot of a lot of folks at your organization really top level folks um but how has mastercard relationship helped support the finicity vision ah yeah um so one of the things that's been um for me, very pleasantly surprising. Um, this doesn't happen very often uh, when you've got M&A activity going on, but MasterCard and Finicity truly share a vision for global financial inclusion and the consumer at the hub. And so, um, you know, really MasterCard also has brought to the table um, that, that shared vision, but also um, uh, fueling the growth that really allows us to accelerate, um, you know, what will be global, um, we're, we're actively looking at, uh, at global options right now. Um, and, uh, so anyway, it's just been a really great partnership from the perspective that, you know, we came at things from such a similar perspective. Mm -hmm. Um, so global expansion, um, also we are working on a variety, none to share today, but, um, but a number of new product ideas together. So where's that intersection of places where there are other, um, um, pieces of technology inside the MasterCard organization today mm -hmm. that we can more tightly embed, um, with Finicity solutions and just bring to clients, a uh, a really smooth, streamlined, kind of comprehensive set of products. So I think it'll be a very cool. Of interesting very, yeah. yeah. So it sounds like uh, maybe even tools for the underbanked, maybe even. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. I have right up Nick's alley. He's gonna love that. <laughs> right. Right. Um, um, okay. Um, did you have any questions, Lisa? Did you did you have any particular questions that you wanted to, to, that you wanted to bring up uh, today? I have one final question for you, but before I get there, I just want to say, do you have any questions? Um, I don't have questions. I mean, I feel like Joe, we've we've covered uh, we've covered a lot of territory here, and I really uh, I really appreciate it. I hope the audience can tell, right? Um, like your excitement definitely comes through. I can vouch for that. And, <laughs> Um, and we just couldn't be more excited about this. I mean, um, uh, serious um, 
in my career, I don't think I've ever worked on something that I felt like took such a giant step forward in terms of the way that, that we think about things and the way that we're able to do things. So um, it's just been a I great think I found to to call Lisa, uh, you know, do the things you love and call That's it work. Right, yeah. <laughs> do the things you love and call it work. I love that song. That's going to be your new walk-up song, Nixa. <laughs> That's my, That's now my walk-on song. I love it. Yeah. All right. Good, good. Well, Lisa, um, we always ask this to our last question to all of our guests that come on. So it's not just a particular question for you, but in the innovation committee, and like we like to think outside the box a little bit, uh, maybe a year or two out. So the last question we'd like to ask you, uh, you know, what innovation uh, that you see coming soon will change the way we do business today? And it doesn't have to be your product, of course, it can be anything. Yeah. Um, well, I, there's definitely a space that I think um, is really critical for our product set, um, and it might, well, maybe like a lot of innovations, right, it, it may not sound that interesting um, at the get-go, but um, really I think that um, we'll continue to see a lot of movement in terms of data access. So I'm thinking about two things there. The first is the ways that we can exchange data in real time. Um, so uh, I think we'll we'll continue to see movement, right? APIs have become um, the standard. There are some other um, upcoming technologies that um, I think will continue to push the envelope in terms of our ability to um, grab the, the relevant data that mm -hmm. um, that is needed and also be able to um, exchange that in, in real time. And then I think we'll see a lot of expansion of the types of data also that can be leveraged. You know, um, payroll data sources are so hot right now. Um, I think we'll continue to see other types of data that can be brought together and, um, and you know, really push forward um, some of the other pieces of not only credit decisioning, mortgage lending, but, um, but some other use cases as well. Um, right. And I do think that area is so important um, to, to kind of innovation and what's coming next. Like we're even seeing the Biden administration jumping in on the importance of ensuring consumer access and control um, of financial data. So, um, you know, not super sexy, I guess, but but the data access is like where everything starts. So um, it's uh, it's really going to be important, I think, going forward. Yeah, yeah, and I think it. I think you know, it's a closing thing. That's that's awesome. Thank you very much for that, Lisa. But I think you know, digital adoption is no longer uh, uh, something that you can say, "Yeah, I'll get to it." It's it's here. It's yeah. today. You got to do it now, and you got to stay at least at pace with your competition, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Now, like you said it's so easy to implement. It you know, it's like if you empower your customers, boy, you'll enhance your business, right? All right. Um, uh, let's see. Let's see if we have any questions, Lisa. If not, that's going to be it for us today. Um, All right. Joe, see. this is Dustin. We've actually got a couple of questions in the queue if you wanted to uh, uh, take a look at those real quick. Uh, if anyone has any other questions for Joe or Lisa, this is the time to submit them using that uh, the questions queue. Yeah, the first one is, is that how is uh, how is this different from the Fannie Mae Day One certainty? And I, that was from Lupa. And I think she's uh, she just she just left. But um, obviously, it's it is day one certainty. That's what we were talking about. Uh, it's not right. different than that, that at all. Rep and warrant is based upon what you negotiate with the GSEs, right? Um, and what kind of rep and warrant relief you're going to get. I think it's standard when you get the contract to sell them this type of paper, but you need to contact them to get it done. But it's exactly what day one certainty is. And what makes it different, though, is that instead, you know, with be previously on the verification of employment through the work number. Uh, they didn't bring in the paycheck stub either. And now that's what you're doing with your product, right? You're bringing the paycheck stub as well as the analytics and telling you what the value, what the, what the amount is, doing the calculations for us, um, as well as also the verification data going back over 12, 24 months just to verify they've been employed. So that's what's a little bit different. So it's a little bit different today than it was in the past. Um, yeah. You could support more. I would say you, you could probably support more borrowers if there's still 20, 2% of Americans that are basically self-employed, um, you know, everybody else you could cover. Uh, so that'd be about, you know, 85, 90% of the market could use Finicity or this type of tool to do verifications. Um, next yeah. question. Yeah. yeah. You, want, you want to pipe in on that? Um, Lisa? Well, well I, I would just, uh, I would just also add, so you talked about the income portion, right? Going back 24 months. Yeah. Um, but also um, the ability to for for the lender um, to simply at close do a refresh of that report 
Um, and again, like in real time, in, in um, you know, 90 seconds, you've got your um, closing validation of employment as well. You're not back out to the borrower. You're not making phone calls to um, somebody's office that's closed because of a quarantine or some <laughs> worldwide pandemic. Um, you know, just just super easy to get all the way through the process. So yeah, the three um, the three day prior to close reverification, you can just pull it again, refresh the data, and bam! Oh, there's the paycheck yeah. stuff. Just hit. We're good. Yeah. Still there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, another question here. This one's from Michael Kelleher. Um, he's joining us today, and um, his question was, um, "What do you believe will be the biggest difference between someone who uses traditional institutions?" versus someone who uses a new challenger bank like a Venmo or an Apple when they apply for a mortgage in the future? Question mark. Ooh, what do you believe uh, the difference between someone who- yeah. Interesting, Joe. I mean, um, tell me if you think I'm, I'm hitting on the, the heart of it. So I think for a consumer, there shouldn't be a difference um, in that scenario. Uh, yeah. The bank transaction data, um, you know, we, we uh, connect to, more than 8,000 financial institutions um, in order to um, have that good data access. So there shouldn't be a difference for what people experience. And actually, most consumers have multiple banking relationships. And right. so we have to assemble those together um, in order to paint the picture. Um, maybe the only thing that I would say is, um, and this doesn't typically happen with challenger banks, but it can happen in some other spots, is that um, there are still some um, banking institutions who are not um, making it very easy for consumers to get access to permission this data um, sure. for other use cases. And so in those scenarios, um, you know, individual banks make it difficult for their for their customers and for their clients to be able to use these type of solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're not the challenger banks and the fintechs on the whole, right? <laughs> that, um, right. That's that part of the industry is usually pushing forward with, um, you know, hey, how do we partner? What can we leverage? Right, right, right. The idea of data aggregation versus direct and source data, right? Mm -hmm. um, yes, um, I guess that's what we're saying, right? When you empower your consumer, right, in a secure <laughs> and innovative open banking powered solution, mm -hmm. then uh, everybody kind of wins, it uh, sounds like. So yeah. I believe it. Our, our thesis for this for this webinar today was really about how this is going to change mortgage capacity. We had a huge problem with mortgage capacity during the last refi boom. And this is really a game changer. Uh, and one where I think you could use technology that's already built for you right now today. So well, thank you very much, Lisa, for coming and, and spending your time with us today. And thanks for Finicity to, to lend you out to the California Mortgage Banking <laughs> Association. Uh, uh, we look forward to seeing you at the conferences and, 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 and hopefully we can invite you back to be a guest here in the future. Yeah, I would love that, um, Joe. It's been really fun. And um, thanks so much for the opportunity. Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much, Lisa. Okay, tell us how we did. Thanks for joining our webinar today. It's Joe Darlene calling here from the Innovation Committee. Thanks to Incelerate for uh, giving us the ability to put all of this together for you. And um, look forward to see you at the, uh, at the CMBA conference uh, down in Dana Point. If you're coming, we're doing a podcast down there. So maybe you might be a future guest. All right. Thanks for joining us today.